nonprofit advocacy group in St. John's River. And our mission is to help protect the river. Hello, welcome to the St. John's Riverkeeper Show. I'm Jimmy Ort, the Executive Director of St. John's Riverkeeper. And as usual, I'm here with my co-host, Neil Armingjohn, your St. John's Riverkeeper. Jimmy. Neil, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Happy Earth Week, Earth Month to everybody. They were filming this couple of days before Earth Day, or actually, yeah, a few days before Earth Day. Well, it's actually, it's Earth Month as, you know. Right, yeah, that's what I'm Earth saying. Earth coming up in a right. couple of days. But it's also, April is Water Conservation Month in Florida. Great. So, so we'll talk a little bit about, um, in the show, maybe that. things that you can do to be what we like to think of as river friendly and to use water more efficiently. And we'll talk a little bit about that later and some things you can do in your yard. But um, before we get started, Neil, and start talking about some issues and things that folks can do to help the river, why don't you uh, kick it off and let everyone know a little bit about who we are, St. John's Riverkeeper, what we do, and um, how we help protect the St. John's. Well, Jimmy, we uh, have, as we always start off by saying, we're the people out there working with you, the community, to protect our greatest natural resource. We're a nonprofit citizens group based here in Jacksonville, and we have been around for now over 10 years working with uh, residents up and down the river to protect uh, the St. John's Riverkeeper. We're a member of uh, St. John's River. We're a membership based organization, and uh, we're the voice of the river. We're out there every day working with not only our staff, but volunteers to protect our beautiful river. Well, I think that's an important point you just made, Neil, is that we're the, we like to think of ourselves as the voice for the St. John's. We are in an independent organization. Right. We're independently funded. We're not a part of a government agency. So we like to believe that that gives us the opportunity to speak Absolutely. truthfully for the river Absolutely. and speak up for what is in the best interest of the St. John's. Right. And as you so eloquently always say, Neil, what we believe what's best for the St. John's is best for all of us. So right. um, that's what we fight for every day. And we do it through a variety of means. Neil is the St. John's River Keeper. Neil is the advocate, the face for the river. He's out there every day attending public meetings, attending meetings where decisions are being made right. about the future of the St. John's. He's out there investigating problems, trying to hold polluters accountable, trying to get regulatory agencies to enforce the good laws that we right. do have on the books, um, being a real champion for the river. Myself, I'm the executive director, and I kind of help with a lot of the special projects that we do, um, campaigns that we're involved with to raise awareness. We have an education director who provides some wonderful education programs and resources. We have an outreach coordinator who, who does some wonderful things in the community, right. helps us involved in a lot of events, and we have lots of volunteer opportunities that she helps to manage and coordinate. So there's a lot of ways to get involved with Riverkeeper. And we also provide a lot of ways for you to learn about the St. John's. So I encourage you, our website will be up on the screen repeatedly throughout the show. Go to our website, check out uh, more about us, learn about the St. John's. We have some resources there to learn about the river and get involved. That's the most important thing, Neil. Absolutely. We, we encourage folks to become members and we hope <coughs> they will because that's what helps sustain our organization. But the bottom line is we want you to be involved because it's our river. And we need the citizens to be actively engaged and involved in helping to protect it and helping to influence the decisions that are made that affect its future. So get involved and hopefully on this show we'll talk a little bit more about right. how you can do that, but right. also go to the website and learn more and follow us through our blog and Facebook and all of those wonderful things. Right. <laughs> so, so thanks. Neil, the first thing I want to talk about is an issue that we've actually talked about repeatedly on yes. this show, and that is the nutrient pollution problem right. that is affecting the river. Uh, maybe you could get just reiterate very quickly what that problem is and then also talk about what has been proposed as a solution to right. address that problem. And I also want to talk about a public hearing that was just recently held. Absolutely. Um, the, the simple issue is we, all of us, in our daily lives are putting more nitrogen into the St. John's River and its tributaries than the river can uh, the scientific word is assimilate. What I always tell people, it means either dilute or treat, however you want to look at it. 
Uh, that's why we have the green monster. We've spent many show talking about these algae blooms that sadly we have seen in our community for the past five years. And I think last show we talked about there's some hope on the horizon that the Environmental Protection Agency has stepped in uh, with some proposals to reduce the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus that are flowing into all of Florida's waters, not just the St. John's River. We were part of a group of people that asked the EPA to do this. Uh, we mentioned last time there was a settlement. And so the EPA uh, is moving forward to establish something called numeric, uh, what I call numbered criteria, which we believe is really the first step into addressing this problem. One thing that you've, you've said, Neil, before describing these numeric nutrient standards, right. it's kind of like a, a speed limit. Absolutely, correct? Jimmy. Right. What we have now is a narrative, meaning uh, the analogy I always use is let's imagine we're driving down uh, I-95 and the speed limit sign, instead of saying speed limit 65, it says drive at a safe speed. Uh, we all know what that means. That's chaos. What the EPA is proposing is, the analogy is, the speed limit 65. We know what it is. It's based on, you know, science, if you will, and it's enforceable. So one of the things that we're big on, as you mentioned, is environmental laws that are understandable and enforceable. So this proposal by the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, will establish those kind of nutrient standards that are understandable, that folks generally understand, the people discharging to the river will understand, and, and people will be able to enforce it. Uh, this past week uh, in Jacksonville, we were the site of the sixth, and what we believe now is the final public hearing on these proposals. Uh, we mentioned uh, there was a series back, I think in uh, February, where there were three hearings, uh, none of which were here in Northeast Florida, we ask the Environmental Protection Agency to hold a hearing here where our local people could go. And, you know, Jimmy, we had a great turnout. We had a lot of our members. We had uh, business people. We had commercial fishermen saying to the EPA, look, we need you to help us with this. Well, and right now they're in a rulemaking process, correct? Exactly. And this is part exactly. of it to right. collect feedback public from information. the public. Public information, yeah. Um, and you know, Jimmy, I think the most important thing uh, for the, this last series of hearings, there was one in Tampa, uh, West Palm Beach, and Jacksonville. Overwhelmingly, the people who attended both night and day sessions overwhelmingly support uh, what the EPA is proposing. And that's simply regulations that will help us as a state uh, address this problem. Uh, we, sadly, Florida, 60% of the waterways in our state are listed as impaired. Uh, the vast majority of those streams are impaired by what hurts our river, nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, we talked briefly last time. Our springs are suffering. So and this, one of the, I want to also real quick sure. mention that one of the, the, the problems with too much nutrients, too, or, or specifically nitrogen, is that it triggers these algal right. blooms that we have experienced right. on an ongoing basis each summer. Right. Last year, actually, the algal blooms, as we've talked about on previous shows, extended well into the what you would consider the fall or even the oh, winter months up until December. Up until, yeah, we had that In first some parts snap. of the river, and that right. was pretty surprising because usually it's triggered by really warm weather and also, of course, uh, an abundance of nutrients right, um, right. present in the river. And so I think what we've seen is that this is a persistent problem. Absolutely. Um, the algal blooms can have a lot of impacts, negative impacts on the health of the St. John's, but it also can affect human health, as we've talked about before, too, because they can emit toxins right. that can cause respiratory problems and cause um, health issues in people. Right. And pets, of course. And, well. you know, one of the things, Jimmy, I think that has, was raised at this second series of hearings, uh, you know, these blooms, even though they're potentially hazardous to our pets and our health, 